Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Day, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 are ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's finding it. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. On sale this week. 1969 Morris LD van, been on the telly a number of times. Well, I supplied cars and TV and the cast and crew was like a family. Gear type, best predominance, featured in Heartbeat, Resuscitator, Minuteman, the P Flask. A 1966 Austin A60 Cambridge. A really honest, very, very rust free example. Genuine mileage, 22,000 on it. I think it's going to make a lovely car. X19, one of the nicest ones we've seen for a long while. It's a very quick little point-to-point -point car that you can have a lot of fun in. No, I love them. I think they're a great little car. Super little motor. Partial to a wedge, because I find them extremely attractive. The North York Moors, the steam railway, Goldfield, Whitby, and of course, Thorns in the Day. Derek's playground. Or as it was known in the 90s, Heartbeat Country. On Sunday evenings for 20 years, families would gather around the TV to remember the happy times. 60s music, dancing, and old vehicles. All set to nostalgic criminal activity in the Yorkshire countryside. Take me ten minutes to do with your mate. Don't be here when I get back. Apart from the many classic cars and bikes that featured in the series, the stars were a Matt of the Idol and his ever tolerant wife, who left London for a simpler life in a Triumph Herald with a roof rack. It's a familiar storyline, and one that was imitated by the young Mr. and Mrs. Matthewson and their growing family. Derek's fault. It was him, really. He just wanted to move here. And for the past 35 years, he's basically never even stopped for a sandwich. Right, mate, we're off. Go and do what we got to do. Try and interview him later, about half past five. You know when he's doing this? Because <laughs> he can't speak. All right. Good morning, Matthewsons. Today, Derek is on his way to collect some vehicles that have actually appeared in Harvey. For many years, Arthur Newton from County Durham was vehicle supplier to the stars. Well, I supplied cars and TV for them. We've still got the ambulance that was used on Darlin Woods and Mayor. Mark 1 Transit van still here. Life on Mars. Long wheelbase, diesel one. And this post office van which was used on Heartbeat and George Gently. It was a pleasure to go to work. I really enjoyed it. And it was lovely, you know. You couldn't get a better office to work in, could you? And the cast and crew was also good. It was like a family. 
Arthur has now decided to hang up his VIP pass for a quieter life out of the limelight. Most of his old collection must now be moved on. I'd like this to go to good homes if it's possible. You've got to keep these things alive. Also for Derek's perusal today, some police cars from the crime drama Vera and a 1968 Sunbeam Alpine that's hardly ever touched tarmac. Yeah, it's a nice little car with 5,400 mile on. It would be nice to see it actually go into a museum. I think that's where it deserves to go, to be honest with you. There can't be very many more left with that sort of mileage on. When you look under the car, it's like brand new. You can see it, it speaks for itself, you know. Arthur's only owned the valuable Sunbeam a couple of years. And unusually, it's not been in front of a camera. Until now. I don't really know what it's going to be worth today. When I bought it, it was advertised for £20,000. Of all the vehicles lying around Arthur's property, there's one he feels particularly protective of. Yeah, we've got a Bedford ambulance, geotype, petrol, featured in Heartbeat, Royal, George Gently, and one or two other ones. 1971, but this shape was built from the mid 50s. It's got the original kit inside, original livery from Kent, resuscitator, Minuteman, air bottles, the pee flask, even the little hot water bottle. All this stuff would take a hell of a long time to find, if you can find it. The ambulance is going to be a challenge for Derek to value, particularly since it comes with some conditions of sale. There's people who wanted to buy it and cut holes on the side and make a catering van of it, but that would just be sacrilege. Honest to God, it would be. It's been kept like this for so long, it wants keeping like this. It's got to get a good home, that's the most important thing. Whoever gets it has to keep it like this. They don't want it to be sold on to be butchered like. It's there. Oh, young man, how are you doing? Arthur, nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, I've been looking forward to coming. I'm trying to come yeah. for ages and ages. But you know what it's like. It's always something to do, isn't it? That's the old one off there. Mm. Right. So George Gently used it used on George Gently after the Royal. After Heartbeat. Heartbeat. You know, you usually get these are totally stripped. It's got its working lights in the back as well. Yeah. Lomas. Yeah. Yeah, it wants to be uh, wants to be a cafe, doesn't it? That's where it wants to be. Yeah. Gin bar, doesn't it? No idea, wouldn't it? Something like that. That's what this wants to be, isn't it? Uh, but this is the more interesting one, surely. The old LD post van, twin wheeler. Yeah. Not boring. quite what Arthur wanted to hear, but Derek is drawn to another retired member of the Heartbeat cast, the Morris Light Delivery Post Van from 1969. I can imagine that perhaps being saved as a commercial, really, rather than that. The ambulances are a bit taboo, aren't they? They're a bit sort of weird. I don't they? know. There's a lot of people in the following. There's, there is Lambeth societies, but will they get their hands in the pocket? Don't think they will. Most people don't like them particularly. You know, there's a certain breed, aren't they, that like hearses. And, uh, but there's not many as they're like gothy type people. But something like this, this is an out and out commercial, and, and I personally think it will stay a commercial myself. Arthur will keep the ambulance for now. The posty van's heading for the auction, though. I think it's difficult to value. I think it'd be a big band, but I think somewhere between four and six grand. Yeah. Derek also likes the sound of the sunbeam. It's been stored all its life. And um, there's its original tyres up there. I took them off and put a fresh set on. They've just been parked up and just not used just much. Parked up. I yeah. see I've got the paperwork. You see, it's all there. Yeah. History I would say, all their MOT tickets, tax discs, when it was taxed and when it wasn't. And... Mm, I think it's very unusual. The Alpines are doing pretty well, full stop. There aren't many really nice original ones about. If it were mine, you know, I'd be thinking, well, if it don't get top, top money, it ain't going anywhere. Right. And, uh, and top, top money, I suppose, would be 20 grand, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
back with the celebrities and a transit with only 16,000 miles on the clock. This one was rammed full of coppers in the drama Life on Mars. I mean, it, it desperately wants to go back to a van, doesn't it? I mean, that's where it wants to be. Well, it depends what somebody wants, doesn't it? That's where the money is, isn't it? It wants to be a van. And, uh, it doesn't want to be a 12-seater, man. So what are you thinking on that one, price-wise? Four grand. What are you thinking? Well, I might think it done a little bit better than that, like. Wood as a van. Derek will only take the Sunbeam Alpine and one of the contemporary cop cars today. The post van and the transit will follow later. It's an eclectic mix for the auction. People come to our sound, they never know what they're going to see there. And this is one of them things, a real oddball thing. This together with a dumper and a cement mixer makes the auction as far as I'm concerned. So we'll see. At Matthewson's, thousands of items of memorabilia are sold each year. Sarah is the chief executive officer with special responsibility for memorabilia because nobody else will do it. This has just come in. I might buy that just to put on the wall in the office because working at Matheson's is like a wall of death. Feeling like you can never get off <laughs> unless you're just going to die. <laughs> Some people like to bring in works of art. What can I say about it? It's a picture of a, an Austin and a tractor. Farmyard scene. It could typically be a Thorntondale scene. Yeah, drive by and just see that. Nice cock chasing his, his hens around. Don't buy me it, will you, for Christmas or anything? Cos I, I wouldn't want that. Over in the village car park, the second load of XRB vehicles has arrived from County Durham. Visitors would be forgiven for thinking they've time warped into a 1970s heist building, but there's no chance of a quick getaway. They don't like cold starts, these old girls. They're not keen, keen on it. The 50-year-old, very original Morris LD needs just a bit of coaxing in the morning. 40 seconds of heat. Crumb, that's a long time, isn't it? What is it? If this was working in London now, that wouldn't stop until 6 o'clock tonight. The vendor said it smokes like mad for about four minutes and then it's clear for the rest of the day. And I believe him, because that's exactly what happens. The Mark 1 Ford Transit from 1978 seats 12 coppers in no luxury whatsoever. The two and a half litre York diesel was notoriously difficult to start, but not this one. It's making Derek nervous, though. Is it a bit unusual being in the front, Derek? Not used to being in the front. I'm normally in the back. Bloody handcuffs are uncomfortable, I'll tell you. I had a riot in Luton one night, and they went round to me mum and dad and said, I think you might have to go down to Luton Police Station, get him out. Last time I saw him, he was being thrown in the back of a meat wagon. But it weren't me. there's been a new arrival, a 1966 Austin Cambridge A60, apparently with only 22,000 miles on the clock. It's a far cry from the modern modified rides familiar to Jack. This should be simple. <laughs> You'll have to give us a minute. I don't know how to start the thing. Lights down, that has to go down too. Some may think it's a bit antiquated now, but 60 years ago, this car was part of a design movement, 
redefining post-war style in Britain. Batista, pinning Farina, turned car design into an art form, producing the world's most stylish cars from the 30s onwards, built the cars of dreams. So in 1955, when Prince Philip uncharacteristically said what he thought and told BMC bosses their cars like va va boom, they turned to Turin to tweak their tweedy image. The result was a sharp new Italian look. Tail fins, mesh grills, but still enough timber and hide to offset accusations of rakishness. The design was shared across the range along with the dubious steering and suspension. Eventually, it looked dated and everybody preferred to go to the Cortina. But they were bomb-proof. And that car your old Uncle Albert had is still a popular classic. This example's come in this morning from West Yorkshire. And it was described to me on Saturday as a really honest, very, very rust-free example. Genuine mileage, 22,000 on it, and it could easily be. There's some work required on the interior. The upholstery hasn't been kept as nice as it could have been. One or two um, cracks and marks and, uh, and, and splits in the trim, but very minor, really. Most important thing, the outside, the body side of it, is extremely good and very much as genuine. I mean, this paintwork, is to, to me, looks original. I, I, think, I don't think it's been painted. I personally would put the flash into a old English white, um, uh, which I think was the, another colour alternative. Um, it's got period wheel trims, as we can see. I think it's going to make a lovely car. Someone's going to buy themselves a really, really nice Farina at a very, very bargain price. I think it's going to achieve 3,000, which I think for a Farina as solid as this in this condition is a, is a good buy. There is one problem with the Farinas, though. They were so well built, they're now sought after for a sport whose name is taboo in these parts. I'm not into banger racing, but I mean, I've seen it at Brayfield and places like that. And it seems that one of these go out on the track and it, it, it just it, it comes back and goes out again in the afternoon and comes back and goes at the next meeting and such like. And this could well wind up there, but we'll see on the day. But I've got no control that, you know, whoever bids the most gets it. So that would be a sad going on if that's the case. Auction day and the moment of truth for the 78 police transit van and the 69 Morris LD. They're classics in their own right. How much more interest they'll be because of their celebrity status, though, remains unclear. Derek's been there before. So you are an EastEnders fan? I don't know, so Bob Yeah. I think they're a bit depressing. Elsewhere, endless piles of memorabilia for those with the stamina to sift through it. We bought a petrol can, primarily because it has the spout with it, which is incredibly rare. Bigger versions of these used to run belts and pulleys in mills and things like that. Yeah. Any idea what something like that's worth? About two or four hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. that about. Yeah. Last time looking round for 15. Outside, some strong interest in the delivery van. And the police transit. Or was a contender to be modified into something more useful? I think if you're going to have a camper van, you might have as well have something with some style, haven't you? Have you got any experience of uh, being in the back I've of one of these? I've been in the police. <laughs> mm, not that I can tell. Actually, we did used to get picked up by the police on our way back from nightclubs when we couldn't afford a taxi and just given a lift home. 1969 Morris LD van, been on the telly a number of times. Bid with me, start me where? Four, four I've got, 4,000, four, two, four, 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 six, 4,600, 4,600, four, six, four, eight, sorry, never saw you, four, eight, 5,002, 5,002, four, 5,400, in the seat, five, four, five, six, 5,006, in the doorway, five, eight, 6,000, six, two, 6,004, 6,004, in the door, sold and going, 6,005, six, five, he says, six, six, 6.7 he says, 6.8, 6,800, 7,000, are you all done? You're out this side, you're out in the seats, 7,000. A thousand pounds above reserve. In the yard, although not one of the bidders today, Graham Atkinson from Coventry is enjoying a surprise trip down memory lane, thanks to the Morris. It's like being in the old days, isn't it? It's great, that is, eh? 
Absolutely magic. Well, when I was a young man, the only job I could get of driving was working for the co-op bakery, who used to have these sort of vans. And I was coming up the Walsgrave Road and a dog ran out in front of me. And I jumped on the brakes rather quickly rather than hit the dog. And loads of bread shot out the sliding door and rolled up the street. So there's a little bit of grit on it, put it back in the van and uh, nobody knew any more about it. At the time, I thought I was the bee's knees driving it. But, uh, you know, by today's standard, when you're looking at it now, it looks old, doesn't it? But so am I. <laughs> Lot number 109, the transit police van. Guaranteed fun with this down the pub tonight. Cracking vehicle, start me on it. Where? Four, four, we're away. Four thousand, two, four, six, four, six, four, eight. Four thousand, eight hundred. Four thousand, eight. Four, eight. Four thousand, eight hundred pound. Five. Five thousand pound is the two anywhere. I can only submit it. Five, two. Five thousand, two. I'll submit it. She's out and away. Five thousand, two hundred. Sold, 5,200, well done, 5-2. The lucky winner is compulsive collector Frank Lawton from North Wales. He already owns 10 classic cars. On top of the police van, it looks like he's going home with a further three. The 472 Riley, hopefully uh, a Morris Thousand van, and hopefully uh, a Brian James car transporting trailer. More than what I expected. Over the years, Matthewsons have had their fair share of quirky and slightly futuristic looking cars. A hell of a charm, but bloody hell it's ugly, isn't it? Some come in bubble design. I've admired them for a number of years. Others resemble spaceships. You have to have binoculars to see to the front of the blooming wing. But one of the most influential was the wedge. I'm partial to a wedge, because I find them extremely attractive. It's, it's that funny old shape and back end and slope in front. People like something new and a bit unusual. What was your dream car then? Austin Princess. Today, Derek is heading off to collect a car that, from the early 70s, had one of the most radical designs on the road. This is a 1989 Fiat Bertone X19 Grand Finale. David Parker from Sheffield has been making up for lost time. Bit of understeer. The only reason I've got it is because my school friends all had one and I never could, so I ended up buying one in later years, shall we say. It's not a tarmac burning machine, but it's a very quick little point-to-point -point car that you can have a lot of fun in. Bang for buck, I think they're very good value still, you know. Everything opens up, it's like a little transformer. So we've got the, the engine that's a mid-mounted one that's sat behind the driver and passenger seat. And then you've got the luggage compartment at the back, or the boot as you would call it, with the jack and everything in. It's a Fiat Strada engine, 1500, and um, very nice little nippy unit, very revvy and it does go well, very pleased with it. And then moving forward on the ship, we've got the front compartment again, another luggage compartment, but this is also where you can store the Targa roof. I think it's, it's a precursor to, uh, to the um, hard tops that you get these days that remove, so that, that actually goes in there. That slots away in there like that, and then, there you go, and you've got yourself a little open top two seater. So yeah, quite unique really, and very, very usable. Neil then. Hiya Derek, you all right? Yeah, not so bad. Bit yeah. breezy down here. Oh, isn't it, eh? Yeah, yeah not crumbs. very yeah, nice, Nice and it? bright though. Thank you for popping over. Oh, you're all right. Yeah, this is it, eh? Hi, it is. How long you had this, sir? Uh, bought it earlier this year, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's, just, it's not been rebuilt or anything like that, it's just been recommissioned, so... Yeah, clean old car, isn't it? Oh, aye, right. it's, it's a decent little bit of kit. Oh, it's got... Uh, Run all right. Beautiful. 
Yeah, she's a level old thing, isn't she? Yeah. Especially for one of these. There's not many about that are not yeah. rusty, is there? And no, this one, really. I can assure you, isn't. Everything about the car's really right. Yeah, well, other than the, other than the ones that are about like 24,000 miles or something like that, it's probably about as good as you get, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's got 43, I think, on it. Mm. So, yeah, it's... Uh... Half decent respray, isn't it? I mean, it's tidy enough and yeah, smart enough, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice car, yeah. yeah. Very nice car. You were talking maybe about five and a half on the phone, weren't you? I'd have a go at that. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah. No, I think it's got every chance. Nice looking thing, cool. isn't it? No, I love them. I think they're a great little car. Super little motor. Like it ever so much. Nice colour. There's not massive interest on X19s, we find. Um, they haven't really got a fantastic name as far as supply and demand, if you like, but, but the interest that you do get from people is strong. So, in other words, they're not queuing up to buy them, people out there, but the guys that do buy them, what a nice one, because they've seen all the rubbish. They've been around all over the place looking at rubbish. Misdescribed rubbish, which is normal anyway, but especially with X19s. So when you come across a nice one, it's a novelty. And this will cause good interest. I think presentation-wise, it's lovely. Guys have made a good job of it. They're getting quite good at it. Derek on the road and Dave and Paul off site, the Matthewson super tanker is being steered entirely by Sarah and Joe. I love it when they're away. They should go away more. Because they don't they annoy you. If they're not here, it just runs lovely. So they should go away more often then? Yeah, I'm thinking of buying Derek. Like a train ticket. City breaks. And of course, he's fluent in several languages. I would have fluent thought. Fluent in. Only, there's only one thing that Derek's fluent in, and I can't say it on TV before nine o'clock. Fluent in BS. After a few hours of peace, though, the familiar sounds return. <laughs> There's been the delivery of a vehicle that many people will have seen, but never really taken much notice of. The Lister Auto Truck. It's a, it's a mechanical wheelbarrow, isn't it? Uh, moving goods around on train platforms and shifting stuff around inside a factory complex. Introduced in the 1920s, the single-cylinder Lister had a front wheel that could rotate 360 degrees and a semi-comfortable Brooks bicycle saddle. I presume you'd have to wear a brown overcoat to uh, operate them. <laughs> You've got one of them. I've got one of them, yeah. Simplicity was the key to its design, although for Dave and Derek, it's possibly not simple enough. Ooh. I wonder why there's two tanks. Any thoughts, Dave? What's that? Any thought why there'd be two tanks? It's not petrol paraffin, is it? Well, it could be, couldn't it? Well, it could easily be, yeah. Maybe it is. They're obviously both fuel of some description. I've been trying to find the de ah, decompressor. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, there's your petrol. There's your petrol. There's your petrol. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like lubricating the chain and stuff like that. Must be must isn't it? Yeah. Mm. They're obviously easy to get back on again, there. Yeah, yeah, aren't they just? I know. We've got a foot brake down here, look. What's all this thing? That's, 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 this, is your, uh, this, is your, this is your reverse and neutral. That's your gears, yeah. Neutral yeah. first second. Yeah, there. there's throttle on there, look. Sorry, Derek, this is there is something that you're not too sure about? Yeah, there is. Is this here? I can't quite work out what this is. It ain't got a lot of travel on it, has it? It's not often that Derek struggles with how stuff works. Between them, though, they're quick to point out the benefits of a machine with a lot of levers. Four, five, six. Yeah, but you've only got to have four hands. Yeah, I know. Now, you see, this is when we had full employment. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Now, of course, we've gone to these little electric trucks. You only one need man. one bloke. It's not on. So yeah. one bloke run alongside with these, doing these handles. Yeah. Another bloke sat on it. You swap around. I suppose you get promoted to the seat. 
I noticed you got up there first, Derek. Yeah, and I wish I hadn't done that because I got a wet ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's teach all, him. It's all. <laughs> the sponge is full of water. Every cloud. And now, <laughs> now it ain't full of water. <laughs> My trousers are now full of water. Look. Are we giving up on that then, Derek? Yeah, we've done enough of that. Yeah. If we'd have known what we were talking about, you could have learned something today. It just so happens that we don't, so, um, so you didn't. It's never long before another auction rears its head. People queuing up, everyone's happy, everyone's smiling. I can hear lots of wallets jingling with lots of money in. Always a bonus. Nostalgia, the order of the day. It certainly takes me back in time because I used to drive these when I was a young lad, 17 year old. The Lister Auto Truck stands no chance of gathering dust. It and the Fiat X19 are now ready for sale to the next canny buyer. I think a lot of guys in here will tell you that it's a good investment sometimes, you know, if you pick the right cars, you know. Outside, regular visitor John Steele, poised to take the advice. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I have a, an Italian sports car at home that's, that's quietly rusting away in the garage, which is also a Bertone, but that's an Alfa Romeo. I think they're quite a lot of fun without actually breaking the speed limit. Some people say Fiat stands for fix it again tomorrow. <laughs> Who am I to say otherwise? X19, one of the nicest ones we've seen for a long while. Start me on it, where are we going to be with it? Lovely thing, four. £3,000, five, four, £4,000 selling, £4,000, £4,000 selling there, £4,000, 250, four, 250, four, 350, four, 450, 4,450, 4,450, and going then, is the five anywhere? 4,450, very provisional, 4,450. Over a grand below reserve, but enough for the vendor. The Fiat will shortly be heading to its new home in Durham. For those people looking for a more portable trophy to remember their day out, there's always the option of rummaging through piles of disconnected artefacts, loosely referred to as auto memorabilia. Lovely. Uh, I'll get in it, see how you want it. <laughs> what it's like. It's a lovely little well-made thing. So that's got the original oil in, hasn't it? I don't know whether it is actually, or it might be somebody's sample. <laughs> Lot number uh, 145 is the Lister Auto Truck. Interesting little thing, this. I think this is great. Wish I had a bit of time to get it going and get uh, and use it. Start me on it, where? 500 quid, I know, all day long. 500, we got it. 500 on sale, 500, 600, selling 600. 600 here, either bid or 600. 700, 700 I've got, 700, 700 I've got, 800. Great fun. 800 pound and going, 800 pound, you're out the back, you're sure. 900, 900 in the doorway, 1,000 pound on my left, sir. And going and away, 1,000. 1,000, either bid or. The lucky winner? Yes, it's Arthur Newton, the same man determined to clear his collection of celebrity vehicles. He predicts a frosty reception later today. I feel I get shot when I go home. My wife will just go some more. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> I think we'll be right though. The garage. It's as hectic as ever, and Sarah is particularly snowed under. What's going on, sir? Sorry? What's going on? Just finding my nails. Eating chocolate and filing my nails. In the showroom. Derek's finally got some time to have a look over the 1968 Sunbeam Alpine. With just 5,000 miles showing on the clock, it seems to have defied the normal rules of ageing. Very late Alpine, 1725, Mark V, I believe they are these. Like a lot of cars of this era, they deteriorate quite badly. The paint jobs on them were pretty bad from the factory. But this actually is very good. It, the panel fit is excellent, really, really good. But it's had some paint. Now, why it's had some paint, we don't know, do we? Bonnet's clearly been painted. 
it's off colour to the slam platform and the wings. You could rectify that, but whether you sort of would, I don't know. I think when they get this age, and obviously this genuine, you almost leave the imperfections alone because they're sort of part of the history of the car. But looking round it, um, I think it's very, very honest, very genuine. Uh, I think it will achieve really good money. I personally thought it would do 15,000. Um, the vendor thinks it'll do 20, so we'll see. Uh, Sunbeam Alpine, 1968, lot number 44. What a car, all the history there, backs up the mileage, it will be right, it feels right, it drives right, it smells right, it will be right. Start me on it, where? 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 14, 14,014. Look at the mileage, 14,000. Find another one like it, even approaching it, 14,000. Going then, 14,000, submitting it. Is provisional only, 14. 14,000, provisional. A thousand pounds below reserve, but with a bit of negotiation, the bidder came up to 15 grand, just as Derek predicted. And then there was the last of the celebrity vehicles, the 2005 police Volvo, which featured in the ITV crime series, Vera, not the usual Matthewson's classic. Doing this just reminds me of Norman Wisdom, on the beat. Now, everyone should get a copy of that, get a DVD of on the beat, sit all the kids down Sunday afternoon and make them watch it. This realistic prop has given Derek an idea that could result in a visit from some non-celebrity coppers. We're actually thinking about bidding on it and buying it and just parking it about. It's a fantastic deterrent. Get to about there, the brakes will go on, nose will go down, you wait and see. Do you know the local, uh, the local Bobby on the beat? No, but I think we're going to soon. I think, because I think, from what I can see, we've got a better car than him. <laughs> he's, he's riding around in an Astra. <laughs> but, you know, in all fairness, if he asks nicely and we can help um, the boys in blue, we will. We'll see. Volvo now must stress this has got to be de-stickered with all police livery before it is used on the road. Exceptional bit of kit. We picked it up on a trailer. You're going to have to pick it up on a trailer. Start me on it. What's it worth? Whereabouts? Come on. Where? Thousand pound. We're off. Thousand pound. Thousand. Twelve fifty. Fifteen. Seventeen fifty. Two thousand pound. Two thousand pound and going. Two thousand pound. You're out, D. Two thousand pound and away. Two thousand pound. Do come and see us afterwards. Two. Two thousand pound. And with that, all of the so-called heartbeat vehicles have now been sold. Netting 30 grand for the vendor. And providing months of harmless tinkering opportunities for the buyers. That said, the new owner of the police transit van from 1978 isn't exactly short of options when it comes to renovation. Well, luckily my wife knows how many cars I've got, so I can be quite honest about them. How many cars have you got? 23. Um, it's a hobby gun mad. Uh, I love every minute of it. Still learning every day, doing the woodwork, doing the panel work, doing the welding. Yeah, I'm in heaven with it, really. Frank hadn't even intended buying the van. I actually went to buy a Morris LD ex post office van. Obviously the bidding didn't go my way. I'd looked at the the police transits and uh, yeah, I thought it looked half decent. Wanted a bit of work on it. Derek was right, it starts on the button first time, every time. So I was happy with that. I had all the structural welding done and I just started on the bodywork and then hopefully at the end of it so give it a half decent coat of paint. Frank intends to keep the transit looking like a riot van and it's been earmarked to play a vital strategic role, decluttering his workshops. Every shed is full of vehicle parts from commercials, motorbikes, tractors, cars, I've got way too many parts. If I pop my clogs, I'm sure my family would just get a skip and throw them all in. So the idea is that to 
take the tram to the shows, sell the parts to somebody who needs them. So you're going to go around the shows, flog the parts to people in the hope that your family doesn't chuck them out? <laughs> yes, yeah. As for the Austin A60 Cambridge from 1966, it went to auction as one of the most genuine examples ever to arrive at Matthewson's. A very honest car. Um, start me on it. Where are we going to be? 2,000, 2,000 pound on my left. 2,000, 2,2, 2,4, 2,6, 2,6, 2,006, 2,8. Selling for the first, provisionally for the second. Third and last time, 2,008 provisional. Below reserve, but near enough for the vendor. Dick Jones from Suffolk, bags a bargain. To anyone who knows him, Dick is not a man afraid to stand out in a crowd. Here he is today, on his mobility scooter, converted to look like Jones's van from Dad's army. I always had an interest in mechanics, and I like the old type of thing. This is Dick's organ. It's from Lincolnshire, about 50 years old, and it was completely rebuilt by his friend Paul at a cost of £6,000. You uh, going to take this to Pilgrave tomorrow? When it comes to machinery, though, Dick shares the love, <laughs> regularly taking his collection out on the road to raise money for charity. It was an accident in this Morris Oxford that prompted the purchase of the Cambridge. We got the Morris Oxford in um, 2017 from Derek. Um, we've used the Morris regularly at rallies, and unfortunately, lump of stone came off straight through the windscreen. This was going to take four months to replace, but I didn't want to let people down. So I went back to Derek, and he came up with the Cambridge, and as you can see it today, it's still in use. The 66 Cambridge has few modern safety features, like stopping power. Not like nowadays, where you put your foot on the brake and you stop. With them, you put your foot on the brake half a mile before you want to stop. It is totally original, and this is what people like. I am attracted to the ancient vehicles, the method of manufacture, keeping alive the spirit for those that are interested.